Uh, there's so much obviously involved, one of which is the mana. Ready, and three, two, one, action. One of my great inspirations as an actor is Dwayne Johnson. This is mostly because he has this amazing story of struggle and triumph. Part of his journey was losing his dream. Dwayne Johnson wanted to become an American footballer. He was cut from the Calgary Stampeders, a football team in Canada, and he had to move back home with his parents when he was 24 years old. He was utterly listless, he didn't know what to do with himself, he was extremely depressed, and in this time, he ultimately decided that he wanted to go into the business of wrestling. And when he told his dad about his, you know, wrestling ambitions, his dad said that, you know, you are throwing your life away. I could relate to that, you know, story so much. And so that's why it's equally just inspiring to me that he's become sort of the legend that he is today in the world of mainstream Hollywood cinema. I find it particularly intriguing that in his social media posts, he has these sprinklings of mentioning his source of spiritual strength. Dwayne Johnson makes a reference to this term mana quite a bit. Here's what he says. In Hawaii, we have a word called mana, which means spirit. Warrior mana is my foundation, core of the symbolic story my tattoo tells. My mana is my DNA that keeps me grounded and hungry. Find your mana and let it lead you, inspire you to be a little better today than you were yesterday. I was so intrigued by this term mana, mostly because like I grew up playing a lot of RPG games and so in games such as like World of Warcraft, uh, mana represents how many magic spells you can cast. If you are running short on mana, it means you've depleted the amount of magic you can cast in the game. That's a super nerdy reference, but it's true. I was so moved by the fact that Dwayne Johnson has this reference to the Polynesian concept of mana, which also is tied to magic in the games that, the games that I've grown up with. And so I read this book <laughs> on mana called Mastering Your Hidden Self, A Guide to the Huna Way. Um, this was given as a recommendation by one of my subscribers, Paul, so thank you, Paul. But in this video, I want to go over this spiritual force that powers Dwayne Johnson and see how the Polynesian Hawaiian terms, how similar they are to the same ideologies and same concepts from my own tradition, from the Hindu tradition, and from like the larger perspective. I think we are all grasping at a similar truth and it's cool to see different cultures, different perspectives, ultimately come to the same knowledge. But here are just a few of the principles of Huna that I had noted down from this book. Um, not Definitely not all of them. Principle number one, the world is what you think it is. This is the cornerstone principle of Huna and it means that you create your own personal experience of reality through your beliefs, expectations, attitudes, desires, fears, judgments, feelings, and consistent or persistent thoughts and actions. This principle also contains the idea that by changing your thinking, you can change the world. Principle number two, there are no limits. There are no real boundaries between you and your body, you and other people, you and the world, or you and God. An additional meaning of this principle is that there are unlimited potentials for creativity. You can create in some form or another anything you can conceive. Principle number three, energy flows where attention goes. The thoughts and feelings that you dwell on, in few full awareness or not, form the blueprint for bringing into your life the nearest available equivalent experience to those same thoughts and feelings. Directed attention is the channel for the flow of biological as well as cosmic energy. And the fourth principle that I noted down, even though there are many more, now is the moment of power. You are not bound by any experience of the past, nor by any perception of the future. You have the power in the present moment to change limiting beliefs and consciously plant the seeds for a future of your choosing. That's an amazing opening line. According to the philosophy of Huna, each of us has three selves, a subconscious self and a conscious self and a superconscious self. The superconscious is not God in the sense of a supreme being. It is one like God within, the Christ self or the Buddha nature of the individual. Another way to think of it is as, as sort of a guardian angel. Mana is the force or energy behind life, thought, and practices termed magical. For the individual, it gives guidance, information, and inspiration, but the superconscious mind doesn't give orders. 
It is sad to see someone waiting for his higher self to tell him what to do because it just won't happen. But once the person decides for himself what to do, the superconscious makes available an abundance of ideas, knowledge, and energy to carry it out. Huna, this Poly Polynesian way of life, offers many ways of enhancing this inspirational contact. Mana has three basic meanings in Kahuna teachings. The most fundamental meaning is power, whether divine or not. The other two basic meanings deriving from that are authority, confidence, and energy. Power means to be able, and this ability applies equally to skills, attitudes, and energy that can do work. In the history books, it is recorded that King Kamehameha, who united the Hawaiian Islands, has a, had a great deal of mana. Some have taken this to mean that he had an abundance of divine energy flowing through him. Mana is not just ability, just confidence, or just energy, but actually refers to all three working together. The kahunas had words to use for confidence, authority, skill, and energy when they wanted to make distinctions. They used mana when they meant the combination. A kahuna uses mana in the process of healing, which means he uses mentally directed energy, confidence, authority, and skill. This is his power. Everyone has mana to some degree or another, which can be increased or decreased according to circumstances. Mana is usually equated with terms like chi, prana, orgon, ode, and others, which refer to life energy, bioenergy, and even emotional energy, although the more correct huna term for these would be ki, the same word used in Japanese. By learning to increase and direct mana as energy, you also increase your skill, your confidence, your authority, your power in general. It's really incredible that the same ideas that I mentioned in a video about Nikola Tesla and Vedantic science is exactly what we're getting into here. Alongside mana, there is this term called Akka, which kind of translates to ether, the etheric force. And that is essentially the superconscious mind, or in Hindi, we also call it the Akashic records. Um, Akka and Akashic, it's interesting that they both actually have similar sounding words in them. And so, the more mana that a person generates within themselves, the more access they have to Akka, the more access they have to the ether. Mana is this life force energy, this vigorous kind of etheric force that you can feel, but you can't necessarily measure. Just a few more ideas that I want to share from you from this book about the concept of mana and how it relates to the ether. In Huna, there is a principle that says you get what you concentrate on. This means that the concentration of your attention sets up a vibration in your aura which will attract an experience related to what you are concentrating on. One of the more important concepts in Huna is that of Akka. The closest concepts in English would be the ether, etheric or astral matter, and the aura. The ideas of the ether connotates an invisible sort of pre-matter, which connects and penetrates everything in the physical universe and which serves as the medium for energy effects. Akka serves as the medium for the life energy. It's the medium for mana. When you see the aura, you are seeing a field of Akka charged with mana, or put it another way, you are seeing the effects of a mana charge on an Akka substance. Perhaps you have heard of the Akashic Records, a concept from India that has been distorted in the West. First note the root Akka in Akashic. The original Indian concept is identical to that of the Huna. With the right focus of mind, it is possible to tune into everything that has ever been thought, felt, said, or done. The more mana you have, the better your ability to receive or transmit. I've said this numerous times, but, you know, I am a huge believer in the law of attraction. I am a huge believer in the ability to tap into super conscious ideas. But this has always been a missing component in my understanding of how to apply the law of attraction. Because while I was in LA pursuing acting uh, more immediately than I am now, I was doing everything right. I was visualizing, I was writing out my goals, I was drinking kale smoothie so I could be high vibration. And all of those principles definitely are powerful in their own way. But what about this concept of generating life force energy? Like that is something that never occurred to me from like a really deep intrinsic way. You know, it's, it's always been just visualize. It's never been, what can you do to like activate the best that is within you? What can you do to really build up life force energy in a way that can penetrate the world and make your presence be felt? 
That, uh, I think, is something that Dwayne Johnson captures so beautifully. You can just sense it off the man from the fact that he's, you know, getting older and get looks incredible. He's like one of the fittest, you know, actors in Hollywood. The fact that he gets up at like 4.30 every morning and uh, when he's in the gym, he has like this intense gaze, this in am amazing playfulness about him. I'm incredibly moved by Dwayne Johnson. I'm incredibly moved by this concept of mana. And I love how these concepts relate so similarly between the Hindu concept of prana, the Taoist concept of building up chi, chi energy, and now this Polynesian concept, which oddly enough, which funnily enough, ties into <laughs> like the RPG video games that I grew up with. Mana, it is a force to be felt. Um, it makes a man a warrior. It makes you tied into your ancestral lineage. It's this really incredible thing that is connected with all these principles that we've talked about in various videos, such as the law of attraction. I'm committed to building up more and more of it. And I hope you are too. Because for those of us who are activating that warrior spirit within us, who are activating the best that is within us, well, for us, greatness is coming. Cheers, guys. I'll see you soon.